Responsible AI, I think we've had different synonyms uh, associated with this. It's responsible AI, ethical AI, safe AI, um, all, all kinds of definitions and descriptions of uh, AI. But when we work with different clients, uh, one of the things that comes up consistently with different business leaders is this question of how safe is AI for me? Their brand implications, uh, and, and as, I, as I go through this, you'll begin to appreciate what the considerations and the concerns are. With traditional ML, I think we're all familiar with bias, right? Because that's label data, and if the label data contains bias, the bias, that obviously means that the model outputs will contain that bias. We're also very familiar with, um, with the notion of a black box, explainability. Yes, it's giving me responses, but how do I substantiate the responses that have come out of here? Or how do I substantiate the output from these models? So that is a, those are concerns and considerations that we still need to contend with, uh, with generative AI. But in addition to that, we now have HAP, or HAP. Uh, again, I suspect this is a, a, an acronym that we're all familiar with. So because this is untrained, excuse me, this is unlabeled data, it's being trained on vast amounts of data. If there's abuse and there's a profanity contained in there, then that can become part of the outputs that are included or the outcomes uh, from these generative models. And then there's, there's the issue of um, um, hallucinations. So hallucination, the, the, the model will have a, an output that is either inaccurate, incoherent, or simply just wrong. And, and one example that I'll, I'll, I'll talk through is, uh, rather share with you is, uh, there is a 60 minute uh, uh, program that happened recently where they were having a conversation with Alphabet and they were talking through generative AI, and as part of that conversation, they asked a question on, I believe it was inflation. And the model or the, the, generative, the, generative, the generative AI application gave a, a response, a mini essay, if you will, on economics, and suggested five books to, to read. The problem was those books didn't exist. It created a title and it created an author and presented it as outputs. That's an example of hallucination. And so this is, this is a concern, and you can begin to appreciate why business leaders or businesses in general are saying, be, before we begin to truly embed this in, in our business processes, we need to solve a thing for things for, such as hallucination. By the way, that, that example I just gave is in no way unique to Alphabet. This is something that all, all vendors are dealing with. Within the space of uh, um, governance, the other thing that I want to talk about is, or rather pro another example I want to provide is this issue of, of IP or copyright law. So one of the things that we're beginning to see is different um, content creators um, coming out and saying, hey, my content has been used to train this model and I have not given consent to it. Now the contention of the of model, the creators will say, well, this is uh, fair use or this is public domain. But the issue is obviously that this is something that has to be resolved and uh, the, quite a number of, of, of lawsuits that are ongoing uh, just around um, copyright law issues. And in fact, one of, the, one of the mitigations by different vendors, many vendors, if not all vendors, is indemnification, where they'll indemnify you to use their models in the event that there are any liability issues that arise. So this, again, is, is, is making us aware of the, the issues um, or the considerations that we are seeing. And as I said, are considerations that we should begin to think about in terms of uh, utilizing generative AI how, how, how am I thinking about this? And then one more item uh, when it comes to, to governance, the EU AI Act. So the EU AI Act was, was passed uh, into law uh, in December, and I believe it's becoming, it came into effect in January. And these are some of the, uh, just some of the elements that uh, this law is seeking to address. I think the way for us to think about the EU AI Act is GDPR. I know GDPR is something that we all became very familiar with very quickly. So I would, I would, I would submit to you that the EU AI Act is to AI what GDPR was to, to data. And this is something that as organizations, we are beginning to, or I should say, let me speak for IBM. IBM has, has actually had to, come, had to come out, but came up with a solution in December that is called What's on Next Governance, part of that uh, AI platform I mentioned, to, to, to address this very issue. We need to address, address life cycle governance. So as you're using the models, uh, are they beginning to drift? 
Um, are you able to explain the outputs? Uh, there's also the question of risk management. Uh, the very thing that I just talked about, those copyright laws, does, does your output include elements um, that might be a concern in terms of your, your brand? And then finally, dealing with this very thing, which is adherence to different um, regulations for, for different organizations. So the, the point that uh, I wanted to get across is that we are, we are seeing a lot happening within the regulatory space. Uh, even the White House, I believe, in October of last year, uh, put out a executive order around safe AI. And that, I suspect, is, is a, perhaps a predecessor, if you will, or a precursor to more regulations coming to provide or to guard, to guard uh, provide guardrails, if you will, around generative AI. <laughs>